Number five then from the new hire specimen paper one. A little bit, still four marks though, on lines. Here's the equation of line one. Part A just says there's another line, line two, that's perpendicular to it. For two marks, what's the gradient of line two? Well, that means I just need to know what the gradient of line one is. So rearranging that would be root 3y equals x, and then dividing by root 3, that's 1 upon root 3x, whereupon, I can call that m1, I can extract its gradient, the coefficient of x, as 1 upon root 3. Which means that for line 2, if it's to be perpendicular to that, then you could either state it straight away, or I could put down this little business here, it'll be the negative of the reciprocal of it, because the two of them multiply to give negative 1, so that'll be negative root 3. Well, but that's simply because if one line slopes up, its perpendicular one must slope down. And if one line's shallow, the other one must be steep. Now B, calculate the angle line 2 makes with the positive direction of the x-axis. Well, you've got that connection between gradient and angle. For a line, to get its gradient, you want the distance up over the distance along the gradient is the distance up over the dis difference distance along between any two points in the line. But the angle that the line makes, those two sides define the tangent of that. So the gradient's also the tangent of the angle. But notice, it's the angle in here. The angle clockwise from the horizontal. So the first thing I'll see here is then, well, the gradient is the tangent of the angle, so the tangent of the angle is going to be negative root 3. That gets you a mark. So now I've just got to figure out what is inverse tan of negative root 3 without using a calculator. Well, these root 3s should ring a bell. That's that 1, 2, root 3 triangle. 1, 2, root 3. That had, that was the 30, 60 triangle, so that must be opposite the bigger one being the bigger of the two sides here. So that's the 60 and that's the 30. So there's a 60 degrees involved. So if it was a positive root 3, it would be up at 60 degrees. But since it's a negative root 3, it must be down at 60 degrees. Or you could think, use your cast diagram because it's a negative. This triangle has told you that the acute angle is 60 and then all sine tan cos, where is it negative? I'm not considering angles beyond 180 because it's said to the x-axis, measured from the x-axis. Well, it must be an angle beyond 90, so 180 minus 60 gives you the 120. So that angle must be 120 degrees. Unless you wanted to go fancy, and it's because it didn't specify anything, and go for radians. So that's 120 over 180, because it's an exact fraction of a radian, that's two-thirds. So you, if you wanted, you could say, hey, that's two-thirds pi, or two pi upon three. Since it only said, what's the angle, of course, you didn't need to consider a cast diagram, you could just have considered the line itself. This line had a negative gradient, so it was sloping down. And that angle of 60 degrees would be the angle of a line that sloped up, so this must go down at 60 degrees. So that means that's also 60 degrees, so the angle measured from the positive x would be 120.